So remember, belief is just the thought you keep thinking over and over again. A belief is something that you keep thinking enough times that you hardwired in your brain and it becomes an automatic program. And we have beliefs about all kinds of things, money, relationships, God, whatever it is. It's all based on what we've been told or our past experiences, right? The boundaries of those beliefs are our emotions, right? So let's just say you got betrayed or somebody abused you or mm -hmm. your father told you that money was bad and there's never enough of it or whatever. That's a story, okay? But, but somehow it left an impression on you. Remember that event very clearly, and that's kind of rooted in who you are, right? So if you keep thinking the same thought, you keep hardwiring it in the brain, you keep feeling the same feeling, you keep conditioning in your body, the redundancy of that cycle over and over again conditions the body to subconsciously become the mind of that belief. And all beliefs are subconscious states of being. Mm. Okay. Take a belief, a belief, a belief, and you string them together. You form what's called a perception. And perceptions are just such extended states of being that we're unconscious. And so then we, we edit out reality. In fact, most people don't see things the way they are. They see things the way they are, yes. right? And people are always filling in reality unconsciously based on their memory. They could be married to a person for 40 years and they don't see the person, they see the memory of the person, right? Mm -hmm. And there's research to prove this, okay? So how do we change a belief or perception about ourselves or our lives, okay? We've studied this. Okay, let's just say that lack is ingrained in there. You got the story, you lived on the streets, you lost everything, you got betrayed, your business partner took everything, took your wife, took you got the story in the half, yes. okay? Okay, you gotta start telling the new story of the future, right? You gotta believe in that future more than you have to believe in the past. So how do you do that? Mm -hmm. You only believe in the past when you feel the emotions of the past. The only time you're gonna believe in the future is when you feel the emotions of the future, right? Okay, so in order for us to change a belief or perception about ourselves and our lives, we have to make a decision with such firm intention that the amplitude of that decision carries a level of energy that's greater than the hardwired programs in uh -huh. your brain and the emotional conditioning in your body. And your body literally has to respond to your mind. That the choice that you're making to change in that moment becomes a moment in time that you never forget. And here's the key. Physically. Physically. The stronger the emotion you feel when you make that choice, the more you'll remember the decision. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then how do we downregulate that old belief? If the trauma created an emotional quotient of six or seven, then your decision to change your beliefs got to be a nine. Right. And you got to come out of your resting state and that moment has to define you. You could say, I know exactly where I was, the time and day it was, who I was with when I made my mind up to change, mm -hmm. right? Because you created a long-term memory. Long-term memories are created with from strong emotion, emotion. Yes. right? But if the amplitude of that emotion is greater than the betrayal, Boom, the body starts responding to the mind. And you're actually giving your body a taste of the future emotionally. Your body's actually getting the taste of that future event. It's experiencing the future now. Now, exactly. Big yeah. explosion in the quantum field. Wow. Big explosion. So the side effect of that is if you combine that clear intention with that elevated emotion, you're basically remembering your future and it looks no different than remembering your past. Think neurologically within the circuits of that memory and feel within the emotions of that new belief and watch your life begin to change because nothing changes in our life that we change. And when we change our energy, we change our life. So now the experiment all of a sudden is no longer based on it being hard or trying or wishing or wanting or hoping. That's what we do when we're, lacking, we're in lack or separation. It's about change. So then when we finally realize in order for us to become abundant, we have to overcome the old personality. And that's 95% of who we are, right? Yes. So then the side effect of the beginning of this process is a lot of discomfort. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of discomfort because you're stepping outside the known into the unknown and now you can't predict. It's scary. No, no, it's you'd, ra you'd rather hold on to your lack. The pain, the suffering. Rather tell the story of that. At least it makes you feel something that's familiar. Mm -hmm. When you step outside and you're saying, I'm not gonna complain about money any longer. I'm not gonna complain about I don't have any. I'm not gonna judge other people who do. I'm not gonna say I can, I'm not worthy. It's never gonna work. All those things gotta go. 
I'm not going to feel lack, I'm not going to feel unworthy, I'm not going to feel separation, I'm not going to feel resentment. These are the things that are keeping my reality the same. Now it's no longer about abundance, about who you become. Mm -hmm. So the overcoming process becomes the becoming process. And so many people come to this work, they want abundance, they want healing, they want a new relationship, they want a new career, they want the mystical, but really they want wholeness. And, and they want healing, they want peace. They want they wholeness. Because they feel on whole. Well, well, when you're in lack or you're in separation, you're not whole. Mm -hmm. Imagine feeling so much wholeness that's impossible to want. That's what, our, that's what we're working on with people. Then you can really enjoy a sunset. Then you can really enjoy a meal. Mm -hmm. Then you can really enjoy your friends. In seven days of going all in, at the end of seven days, their body looks like genetically, with all the metabolites, that they're literally in a different environment. You know, here's the weird part. Mm -hmm. They're in a ballroom. Right. There's not a lot <laughs> happening in a ballroom. Right, right. What's happening in a ballroom? I've been to thousands of ballrooms. Yeah. But the environment somehow looks like they're living in a very prosperous, very healthy, very loving, nurturing, very whole environment. The fundamental importance about all of this is I, I really don't care people want to be abundant. I don't care if they want to heal. I don't care if they want to have a mystical. I don't care what, when I travel the world, it doesn't matter to me. I just want them to be in the experiment. The experiment of actually trying it out yes. and seeing God, if I really change my energy, well, could I actually have an effect that's produced in my life? And if I'm waiting for the event to occur, I'm back to the illusion of separation and lack. Mm -hmm. Say, Let's say they're not waiting. What should they do instead of waiting? Keep feeling the feeling in the present moment and trust. Look, right? if you're, will, if you're waiting, you're not creating. I mean, that's just the mm. way it is. So wake up every day. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want your dream? It's so much easier to forget that vision than to remember it, right? So yes. if you're going to remember it, you got to keep it alive in your mind. How do you keep it alive in your mind? You, you disconnect from your environment. You close your eyes. You play music in the background. You get, sit your body down and it's got to pee and it's got to eat and it's got to well, you just <laughs> just sit down for a few minutes yes. like training a dog like yeah. stay when i say it's time to get up we get up don't be thinking about what's going to happen in your day you already know what's going to happen don't think what happened yesterday you already know that get in the present moment and say who do i want to be when i open my eyes who do i want to be today what would mm -hmm. greatness look like right. how, how, would, how would i how would one day one shot, one lifetime, what would an abundant person do? Let me rehearse that with my eyes closed. Let me remind myself who I don't want to be. Let me remind myself of who do I want to be. Let's not get up, Lewis. Until we get into that. Until we are, to where the tennis ball hits the sweet spot. When you go, oh, I'm ready for the day now. Now, game on. Now, if you can maintain that modified state of mind and body the entire day without defaulting by seeing someone or doing something, stay in that state, the experiment still continues. And, you're changing your energy. Doesn't happen in two days. You're not that good. Right. That's it. You're not that good. People who diagnose with really serious health conditions and they start doing the meditations and they realize, wow, God, my body feels better. My pain feels better, but my values and my scans are still showing the disease exists. All right. Did it, does it mean that it doesn't work? No, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. It means like, what am I doing the other 15 hours of the day? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm in lack. I'm in fear. I'm responding to the same people in the same uh -huh. ways. And you gotta think about this. As long as your response to everything in your life is the same, you're not changing. Right. So change your response to things in your life and you're in the process of change of your vision, like that vision of the future. You have to keep alive in your mind. That should be the game. The you ones mean, that can keep that vision of the future in their mind now, exactly, and and have yeah. a personality. Even if your even if your reality is falling apart, right. and that's happened to a lot of people. I mean, there are people that come through our work who are living in the back of their car, right? And now they're, you know, th living very well or, or sure. bankrupt, and now they're you know their companies are thriving. just thriving. Yeah. They just they just never stopped believing in themselves because if you believe in yourself it means you have to believe in possibility and if you believe in possibility you're going to have to believe in yourself and so many people who are in lack somehow don't feel worthy right mm -hmm. so so the abundance then becomes the sign that you finally become worthy and for the soul it's not about the abundance 
It's about mastering your worthiness. Mm. And the reflection Man. is the things that you accumulate. What's the what's the the strategy to start believing we're worthy of receiving now? Is there fill a- your brain with as much knowledge as possible? And and be- listen, my dad used to say this to me all the time. He'd say, wait, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. Just sit down with me here. If anybody else can do it, you could do it also. Mm. Well, let's just start there. So how did these people do it? Like, let's look at what they did. Right. All right, let's study. This is a school of greatness. Yeah. Let's study greatness. I don't know. What if, you get to write the script. Yeah. And you, you tell the story of your future instead of telling the story of your past. Watch mm, what my happens. Gosh. We had people stand on the stage. Someone stand on the stage this weekend in Denver. Just said, my God, I... I, <laughs> I I really believe that that um, this would work. I just I just didn't believe I could heal. I didn't believe. I really didn't believe it. I really didn't believe. She was a physician. Is a physician. I really didn't believe I could heal. Now, is it about the healing anymore? It's about overcoming the belief. Mm-hmm. Every day, she's got to make that decision with such firm intention that the amplitude of that decision is causing her body to respond to her mind. And that's the moment she's rewriting the belief. And if, if she doesn't feel like it, don't expect anything to occur in your life. You got to come out of your resting state. You got you to make that choice. 